Rise of the Guardians, influenced but uninspired. This is a hack and slash dungeon crawler. Think Diablo for kids, but poorly done. You and your team of mythical creatures, North, Tuthiana, E. Aster Bunnyman, and Sandman, team up with Jack Bieber. I mean, Jack Frost, to take on Pitch Black, who's trying to rid the world of belief in the Guardians. It's up to you to restore the world's belief. You do this by rescuing and defending people, which is a blast for the first few hours. But by the end of the second level, it feels very repetitive. The game starts to feel like a chore. I would have preferred an empty world in between these tasks, so I wasn't so sick of fighting creatures every time someone needed my help. Battles and bosses pose no challenge. As a level 10, I was slicing through level 18s and 20s like warm butter. You can't die, at least I don't think you can. Instead of health, you lose belief in yourself. But all you have to do to snap out of it is throw a bag of belief. You get three at a time and they regenerate. You can play local co-op with up to four players total, but on your own you can jump between any of the five characters anytime you want. The AI on your team can hold their own, so if you jump, it will be because you need help, never them though. To add to the variety, there are five different worlds. One for each character, all with their own special look, but all having the exact same Field. There are over a hundred chests and collectibles to be found here, and I was a bit annoyed that they existed when a weapon system should have existed in its place. Instead of finding weapons and upgrades in these hidden chests for each character, your weapon and characters are upgraded as you kill monsters and progress through the story. The chests have nothing in them but trophy progress. But you get blue diamonds for killing shadow monsters, diamonds you can spend on power-up gems, and for completing various missions given to you throughout the world and leveling up, you get red gems that you can spend on improving skills like strength and belief. The game is alright, but just alright. You could tell the developers weren't really trying here, especially with the lack of a loot system. It isn't a horrible game though. The cutscenes are very inspirational, and maybe you could use a pep talk. It is playable, the controls are very responsive. I only had a few moments of my characters switching on their own. It will take you about 8 hours to clear, but a very repetitive 8 hours to clear. If you're a trophy or achievement hunter, rent this game. If you could care less about those things, stay away. For what it is, it's a 6 out of 10, and overall, it's a 6 out of 10. And remember to believe in yourself, and that you're not alone. You never were alone, and I believe in you. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new. Tune in Monday for Mystery Box Monday when you find out what game we're playing next. Thanks for watching.